let's walk through calculating basal area and stem density for our example data set. The first thing that we need to do here is convert a series of diameters that were measured in the field into a uh, measurement or an estimation of basal area per tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new column, basal area underscore tree. I'm going to write in a equation ex uh, that uh, will convert these data into a measurement of surface area in square feet. Remember, these diameters were measured in centimeter, centimeters, so we need to use the metric equation. So what I'm going to do is uh, type the equal sign. That tells Excel that this is a, an equation. And I'm going to select the diameter measurement here. And then I'm going to put this into parentheses so that I can square it, just like the um, equation. Let's see if I can find this thing on my on my keyboard. That's how you tell Excel to, to uh, square a value. And then I'm going to multiply the result by this um, funny little conversion here. It makes everything simpler than writing that pi r squared. All right. So you may not, uh, you may or may not know this, but when you're working in Excel, you can just highlight this little corner here and double click on that. And then that just copies the equation down through the entire data set. And I always just scroll down to make sure that there isn't some problem such as a missing uh, value or something. And everything here uh, is clearly where it needs to be. All right, so we've got the basal area per tree, but what we really want to know is the basal area per hectare. As well, we want to know the density of these stands uh, in addition. So the next thing we're going to use is a handy feature of Excel called a pivot table. And what this does is it will go through, it'll do um, some kind of calculation which would otherwise be annoying in a very efficient way. Uh, it, in this case, it's going to do a series of averages and standard deviations for a big array that has an index in some way. In this case, we've got the data indexed by um, site and plot. I'm just going to change one characteristic of that to an underscore because sometimes Excel doesn't like the slash. And then I'm going to select the entire data set. I'm going to go back up to the top. And then um, I'm going to create uh, a pivot table. And the way I do this is just go into insert. And there's this little dialog called um, pivot table. I always like that to put this on an existing worksheet right next to my data. It helps me keep track of everything. And um, this is just the, the dialog that says, what data do you want to go into it? Where do you want the table to be? And then you have to uh, do this part, which is where you're going to tell it how to index everything. So I want to know the total basal area per plot. So I put that into the rows. The rows are how I want everything indexed. And the thing that I'm going to do a uh, calculation on is the basal area. OK, now uh, in order to do this uh, correctly, I have the count here right now, but I don't actually want that. I need, the, um, I need this uh, value to be changed to the sum. Basal area is a characteristic where you sum it across the entirety of, of the plot. So I just uh, change that to sum. So let's track down that error. Uh, in the site, the needles, for the needles, we've got some uh, mistake here. So what we're going to do is just, uh, before we go any further, let's scroll down and see what's going wrong. There's likely a missing data point here. And this is uh, just some data checking that one always has to do. And what we're going to do is just, um, we didn't catch this on the first time through. And we're going to just scroll down here until we find the um, this individual value that has an error. This is a missing point, so let's just delete that. And um, there's some, you know, small problem there, but I think we can uh, we can probably live without that point. 
once you've got your um, mistake identified and hopefully you've got your mistake fully identified here we're going to just hit refresh and then that updates the table so um, that's our results there and now what you've got is your first step here which is a full accounting of basal area for these entire data sets or for each of these sites now the one problem that you've got here is that each of these sites has multiple plots that were measured and in this case each group measured one plot so what we have what we need to do there is now get uh, the total number or we need to get the basal area per plot so that we can then do additional calculations on this and probably the best way to do that is just to take group and drop it into the columns here and now what we've got are the plots across the top and then the sites across uh, in, in the columns. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab this stuff. I've kind of gotten all the use that I can get out of, um, out of the pivot table. I'm going to copy this material and then uh, I'm just going to make a copy of the, um, of the data down here like this. And what this allows me to do is to then write in some other information, some other two other equations that help me um, sum all this stuff up. And the first is the uh, what I want to know is the average, or I'm going to say basal area. And this is going to be the average basal area, the estimate of basal area overall for these plots, and then I'm going to also do, get the standard. Um, deviation here uh, given that we it's much more useful to know both the average as well as the variance around that so getting the average in excel is pretty straightforward it's just the, the uh, command is average and i'm going to grab um, everything here in parentheses and um, uh, hit enter i can then uh, copy this again down like so and I'm going to write in the next the equation for standard deviation which is STDEV and then again I just uh, select across these enter and then you've got it now the next problem you have is that this is in basal area uh, per uh, this is in basal area per plot uh, it's actually basal area per meter squared per plot and standard deviation in the same uh, in the same unit. Now, plot is an arbitrary uh, size, and we need to convert this into something more standard. So um, I'm going to do that right here, and this is these are one uh, twentieth of a hectare plots. I'm just write that out. So uh, what we've got it here is basal area, uh, meters, meter square, HA. I'm going to just keep everything straight here. And then to STD, uh, and this is a meter squared, excuse me, not meters cubed per hectare. And I'm going to just write this out so it's a little bit better here. Um, all right, and all we have to do now is take this and multiply it by 20. Again, it's a 1 20th of hectare plot. And uh, the good news is this works also for standard deviation. So now you've got an accurate estimate of both the standard deviation and the average basal area. And now, even before you uh, calculate uh, anything from this point you can see kind of the variation here we've got this sequoia stand it's an old growth uh, giant sequoia stand so it's got a lot of basal area that's that's uh, quite a lot of basal area um, and it's it seems to be a pretty much about the range that everything has in uh, for that stand those are those were very large trees and there were a lot of them uh, in that stand. And then you've got one down here um, 
this Walker Pass area, which is, of course, Penyon Pine, and that's got very low basal area. Uh, now we want to be able to, we want to plot these so that we can make some comparisons about them. And Excel does this okay. What I'm going to do is um, first I'm going to copy these, these uh, labels over here like so um, because that's going to give a better, uh, that's just going to make my life easier here. So I've got site and I'm going to highlight the data that I want to plot. And really the best way to do that, to uh, demonstrate this is just going to be with a, with a bar chart. This is going to show, give you some immediate information about the differences between sites. And it's just a lot easier to, to read. Uh, Excel has some characteristics, some default things that don't really help you very much. It gives you this title, delete that, um, delete that right away. And then uh, down here, you've got the access uh, uh, titles, and uh, it's good. It probably it's, don't lose track. Just immediately get these on here and um, fill them in. So on the bottom, we've got site, and it's on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis, we have uh, basal area in meters per hectare. Okay, now for the not that much fun part, and that's adding the error bars. Adding the error, adding the error bars to this graph as a second set of bars is absolutely the wrong way to do it. The standard deviation is a characteristic of each of these sites. The variance is a characteristic of each of these sites, so we want to add it to the bar. All right, so how do you do that? It's not very straightforward. First thing you need to, to do is click on the bars, and then you can go up here to chart uh, elements, and you're going to find this dialog for error bars. Okay, so watch this. This could not be uh, more convoluted. What you need to do is to go down to more error bar options. If you choose any of the defaults, it's going to give you garbage. All right, and you can see clearly that the standard deviation is very is 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 quite variable among these sites. So uh, click on this, and then what you have to do is, uh, well, first off, uh, it's best just to go plus. Just go plus. Um, you can do both, but it makes a cleaner graph if it's just plus. Now, uh, it's still got a default value on there. So you're gonna have to go down here to custom, click on this, and then specify value. Now we get this other dialog here, and we go to positive uh, error value here, and then uh, come over here to the standard deviation. And then finally, we can highlight them and hit OK, and then there they are. Now you've got a graph that shows both the average and the variance for, the, for this particular forest structure for this data set. Doing density is going to go follow the same. Um, the same procedure, but you're going to need to count. Uh, you're going to need to do a count here. And the good news is I can go back and I can simply count how many values in the data set have a basal area measurement. That's a, saying count how many DBHs were measured in each of these plots. We do that. And here now we have the stems per plot. You can take those data and then update your uh, data set down here, and uh, and then and then you're rolling. Um, this seems to have already updated uh, to some degree, and uh, did something pretty confusing down here. So watch out. Excel will try to try to mess you up at every turn that it can. Uh, I'm going to hit undo, uh, but uh, there's a couple of ways around this. But basically, once you do the, once you get the counts of how many times basal area was measured, you can then create this data set uh, again, but with counts, and do the same thing. Repeat the procedure again for uh, scaling up to stem density per plot, and also calculating, uh, estimating the standard deviation.